Hello. We're going to do a, another rando poll. So we haven't done this in a long time. And I didn't come up with this, right? I mean, there are other channels that do this as well. I, I think Norman Maslov is the master with his, uh, his whack-a-mole series. But uh, where I blindly pull five, we'll do five, five records. And then those are the five we've got to talk about in the, uh, in the episode here. So let's put my head up here. Cheating. No cheating. There's one. Let's put that on the floor. Let's go down here. How about. Let's try that. Whatever that is. And let's go somewhere down here. Right there, right there, and let's go over this direction. I know this is, I think this is where my blues, so we'll pull something out of the blues. We'll talk about blues music. Yeah, let's try that, whatever that is. All right, oh. and one more. Can we go behind? Wow. This, whatever this is. All right. So let me get the seat back here and then we'll talk about these records. Hey guys, welcome to Amity Tracks. So I've pulled the five records and let's see what we got and see if I have anything interesting to say. I don't know. <laughs> Culture Club, Color by Numbers from 83, 1983. Yeah, I don't know what I have to say about it. I mean, this was huge, obviously. I bought this at the time, I mean, you know, when, when they were big. I mean, I guess you'd say Boy George is definitely a pioneer, you know, in the sexuality and all that. But a truly fantastic voice. Boy George had, had a great voice. I mean, really great voice for this kind of pop music in the 80s. Um, I mean, good band. Got what, Karma Chameleon's on here, Black Money, Church of the Poison Mind, Miss Me Blind. Those were kind of the big hits off of here. Now, this is, this is great. I'm not ashamed to say. I, I mean, I, do I pull this out much? No. But, I mean, it's, it's good. And like I said, I, I think Boy George is a genuine, is, was, whatever, I don't know what, what he sounds like nowadays, but at least was a genuinely great singer. All right, number, the second one I pulled here is much more recent. This is Brian Eno's The Ship. Well, this was 2000, well, 2015 when this came out. Brian Eno's The Ship. It's on, uh, was it just... Yeah, it's on two records. Yeah, yeah, it's on two records because, yeah. Well, anyway, I don't know. Yeah, it's just double record. Um, really a return to his ambient stuff. I really like this. The ship itself, I think on the, on the I remember I bought this on CD and I liked it so much I went back and got it on vinyl. A little easier to listen to on CD, actually, because the ship, the title track, is divided between two sides of the vinyl, if I remember right. It's a little easier just to put in the CD and listen to it all the way through, but really minimalist. But I don't know, for some reason, it just really pulls me in when I listen to it. I know he, he you, know, you kind of hear like sounds sort of echoing through the ocean, you know, and, and he, I think he was interested in the Titanic, the sinking of the Titanic. And, and so, so it's really ghostly. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think notable is that at the very end, there's a cover of I'm Set Free, uh, the Velvet Underground tune, which is Gord Brian Eno does a gorgeous job on that. But the rest of this is very much kind of in his ambient ambient uh, style. And uh, I don't know, I, I find it pretty intriguing. It, it, you got to be patient with it. I mean, you know, you're going minutes at a time with just almost sort of drone, you know, <laughs> like notes. And But I, I don't know. It, it pulled me in. I, I still really like that. All right. The third one I pulled off the shelf 
was Paul Simon's Rhythm of the Saints from, what was that? 19, yeah, 1990 is what it says here. So obviously his follow-up to Graceland, which was huge. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I actually prefer this over Graceland. And Graceland's awesome. Awesome. But for some reason, this has sort of a, I don't know, it has a, has a more consistent kind of mood and feel to it. Uh, trying to remember what I read about this. I, I, I do, I, I remember that he, oh, it's all coming back to me now. I remember that he, he went, so, so, you know, Graceland was really using a lot of like African, South African musicians. This is more South American uh, based. And I remember he went to South America or, or at least got some of the stuff from South America where he recorded the rhythms first and then came back with those tracks and then laid, like wrote the songs on top of those rhythms. It's kind of interesting, right? Um, you know, and then, you know, and then got, wrote the melodies and the, you know, with, with his acoustic guitar and then, you know, the lyrics and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's an interesting way of, of working, but you now the obvious child was kind of the big song. I, the Cool Cool River, that's the one. So I, I think that one's really powerful. I don't know, man. I, I really like this. It's got a real consistency of mood. It's not quite as obvious as Graceland as far as just, just those, those hooks and all that. So, I, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't as huge commercially, but I actually prefer this. Oh, what do we got here? So this, remember I pulled one out of the blues section, and this is what I got. Albert Collins. Robert Cray and Johnny Copeland showdown. So three great blues guitarists. I think two of them are now deceased. Robert Cray's still around, but uh, he was sort of the young gun. <laughs> when the when when did this 85, 1985? Yeah, so Robert Cray was just hitting big in 85. I love Robert Cray, by the way. I I don't know, maybe we'll talk about him in a future video, but love Robert Cray. So yeah, these. Um, Johnny Copeland, I don't know much about. I know he was from Houston, my hometown. And Albert Collins, I know, is a Texas guy, I think. I don't know. There's, um, oh, it looks like, I'm, sorry, I'm like, like in real time sort of reading the liner notes here for you. Uh, that's what happens when you just pull it off. Looks like Albert Collins out of Houston too. Really? I know Johnny Copeland was. Well, I, don't, I think Albert Collins is at least out of Texas. We can at least say that. And Robert Craig is not from Texas. But anyway, yeah, this is good. I just think, man, I don't. I, I probably haven't listened to this since probably in two, three decades. I don't know whenever I bought it. I remember the, the Dream. I think the Dream is the only track I kind of remember being really good. But I don't remember either way on everything else. Yeah, I don't know. There's a little story about Albert Collins. I did see him live in Houston once. I, I, Albert Collins, I, I saw him at um, uh, Rockefeller's, which is a no longer there uh, nightclub in Houston. I saw some great artists at, at Rockefeller's. But anyway, I saw Albert Collins there. His whole shtick was he had a super long guitar chord. And so at some point in his shows, kind of one of his things was he would, you know, kind of jump out into the audience and like walk through the audience, you know, while soloing. And then he'd like go out in the, out the door, out into the street and put, you know, and then people would follow him out. And all that. So I remember he, he did that at the show. He was kind of old by the time I saw him. So it was just sort of this sort of expected shtick by that time. You know, it wasn't <laughs> you know, far from spontaneous because I think he, kind of this thing he did at every show. I remember it being really weird. So I, I remember I followed him out in the street like everybody and, but you couldn't hear the music really well coming from the, from the, from inside the club. And so he was out there sort of like, you know, like playing the guitar. So, you know, you know, with his, with the, with the face, you know, and all that and soloing, but you could like, couldn't hear it. So it was almost like miming just, you know, <laughs> and it's like, okay. <laughs> you know, but it was a thing. I just, I just remember that anyway. I do have some Albert Collins stuff though. And he made some great records in his prime. Robert Cray, I mean, I love, love, love Robert Cray. Um, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about Johnny Copeland, but anyway, there you go. All right, the last one I pulled. 
Still got the price tag on it. Looks like I found it used for $5.99. It says here, wherever that, whatever store that's from. And it's Elton John, Rock of the Westies. Not bad for $5.99, I guess. But the $75, yeah. I always think these are later. I, I always forget that Elton did that huge batch of records all within like, you know, four or five years in the early 70s. I got, I, that feels like that should be stretched out over the whole 70s, but this was, there they are. This, Elton is, where's Elton? Is Elton on? Oh, he's not in the picture. All right, well, here's the band then. And then Bernie, here's Bernie, I think. But yeah, here's the band without Elton. I mean, I guess Elton's there on the, on the front. All right. Yeah, anyway. Um, I, I, I think... I think this is this record sort of came right after that peak, you know. So it's not as great as, as that batch of, you know, like Madman, Cross the Water, Cumberweed Connection, uh, you know, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, of course, uh, Honky Chateau, you know, all the like that batch that was just just amazing. This came, you know, kind of after all that. Let's look at the track listing here. Island Girl, that wasn't that kind of the hit. I feel like a bullet in the gun of Robert Ford. I remember kind of liking that. Yeah, I I don't. I think Elton's sort of getting tired by this point. I mean, I mean, as far as you know, that 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 first just just uh, explosion of creativity on those first records, I, I think it's catching up to him here. You know, because this is sort of the end of that that first era. It's all right though. I don't know. I don't. Know, what about you guys? You guys like this one? All right. Well, anyway, there you go. There's a quick uh, rando pull episode for you. We'll do some more of those. Those are kind of fun because, you know, you don't know what you're going to. Then you're forced to talk about them. So we'll do that again soon. Well, all right, guys, we appreciate you watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you have not. It really helps us out. Hit the bell for notifications and like the videos. All that great stuff helps us out. And we'll see you next time. Bye.